Remember when you were young and everything in life seemed so much more fun and the possibilities seemed endless? Is that still the same for you or has life become a serious business? Wherever you are, you can change it. What if more magic, fun and possibilities were available to you right here, right now? Join Tamara and Alan in the playground of possibilities as they play, laugh and explore new ways you can use to make your life more fun and to create more of what you desire. Hello and welcome to the Playground of Possibilities. Sorry, I'm being, <laughs> I'm being chimed in by the clock and it completely threw me today. You think I'd be used to it after 20 years of having the clock stuck behind my head? Anyway, this is the Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, and the awesome and amazing holiday lady who's in the South, Tamara Yonker. Good morning, if you're somewhere where it's morning in the world. Yeah, absolutely. It's morning where I am. <laughs> South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yes, I yes, I am on holiday in South Carolina. If this is one of the, my most favorite places on the planet. I came here for the first time several years ago and literally stepped off the plane and fell in love. <laughs> and I, I every time I come here, I fell in love all over again. It's quite a unique, um, a unique place. This very nurturing to my body. My body loves it here. So. I know it's probably nothing to do with our show at all because I'm just going to be really nosy because that's the way my mind works. So how what's how is kind of South Carolina different, say Denver, Colorado, where you normally hang out? Well, first of all, we don't have any oceans <laughs> in Colorado, so uh, okay. I'm, right, I'm right here on the ocean. Actually, I'm going to ride my bike to the ocean a little bit later after after our show today, and and it's lush and it's green and it's moist. Um, you, it's humid, like you know, you can breathe the air and actually sense that there's there's moisture in it. And versus Colorado, which is dry and it's high elevation and there's mountains and here it's just flat. And um, yeah, it's just very different, very 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 different. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to kind of do a comparison in the UK, but we don't. When are you going to come to the U.S. and experience all this yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, do you know, it's really funny because there are so many things going on in the U.S. that I keep looking at thinking, God, you know, sometimes I do wish I had I could be over there for like a year because mm. there are so many different things in different places that I'd like to go to um, and people that I'd like to play with. You know, I, yeah, anyway, I have to create <laughs> my own reality. Is that even possible? Yes, you know? yes. That's what, that's what our topic is today. Well, it is. Reality. <laughs> so, so having digressed us off to uh, to your sexy kind of Southern American accent that you were doing before the show, you should have. If you, it's a shame you lot can't hear us before the show because it was it was really really fun. It was brilliant <laughs> hearing Roa and uh, and uh, Tamara we're, doing we're, wonderful. We were playing Southern Bell. <laughs> <laughs> we see. I don't even. Yeah, I play around doing it but I'm nowhere near as well obviously I don't have the accents as because I don't hear them as often <laughs> but anyway so how often so let's talk about today's show today's show how, uh, what do you mean I create my own reality mm. this has been yeah this has been uh really in my mind recently um and I'm just I'm you know I've, I've cognitively understood for a long time uh, the stuff around your point of view creates your reality and we don't all live in the same reality and your you know all of that kind of stuff until I'm finally getting thinking oh my god actually anything is possible but how many people listening to this show and you know and beyond don't uh, you know believe that we all live in the same reality that you know if you even think that you have a different reality you're living in a dream fantasy world you know so yeah. anyone who's listening yeah it's like Join the chat. Ask some questions. Tamara, tell us about when did you start to get that we don't have the same reality? I I think it's it's even when I was a kid, I I began to recognize had some awareness of that. I probably didn't tell anybody like anything that I noticed myself that was different than the way everybody else thought. Mm. You know, like the way your family thought, the way your family's friends thought, the way your your school peers thought, like anything that I noticed that was different, I kept a secret because I thought, well, I must be weird here. I must be wrong here because no, everybody else seems to be having this uh, this consensus, right? We, we tend to call it consensus reality, except that I see things differently. So I thought, well, I'll just keep that a secret to myself because I must be the weird wrong one, right? And and that's what I first started to notice is that is that people can have 
um, you know, you can grow up in the family. I have a younger sister and, and we grew up in the same core, you know, family of origin. And yet our experiences of growing up in that family were vastly, vastly, vastly different. And so there's, there's, there's signs all around you. We tend to project our worldview the way we, you know, the way I am, I sort of assume that other people are the same. Mm. And, and until you begin to have some experience of that, my father, um, gave me a, a, a there was something that he did gave me give me when I was younger that was quite valuable he he said this is probably something that other people have heard assuming just makes an ass out of you and me so I <laughs> like like there's there's a recognition that if I assume that just because I have a worldview or I see things one way that that everyone else is going to too and mm. and you you can get you can trip up on that pretty pretty easily pretty quickly and I think that's when I started to notice huh this isn't my worldview is not the same as everybody else's. For example, my father, growing up in my in my household, that experience of my sister and my myself, I experienced my father as an, a very angry man, and and so did my sister, and I experienced him as very dominating and overpowering, and so I spent a lot of time sort of hiding away from that, like hiding in my room, staying away, never talking back, never speaking up, you know, becoming the docile, compliant, obedient child who just never spoke. And my sister on the other, that was my strategy for sort of coping with this environment. Now, my sister, on the other hand, she adopted a completely different strategy. She's highly volatile. Like, she'll throw tantrums and scream and yell and do whatever it takes until she gets her own way, right? And so she basically just says, boom, and, and my father, like, freaks out and does anything he can to get her to shut up, right? Oh, you, if, if you want a new car, that'll get you to shut up? Okay, I'll give you a new car. Oh, oh, you want a horse? That'll get you to shut up? Okay, I'll give you a horse. Oh, you need a trailer to put the horse in? Oh, okay, quick. I'll give you, I'll give you a trailer to, like, like, so her experience of my father and my experience of my father were totally different. In my experience, my father was stingy. He was not generous. He, you know, like, and so how is it possible that two people can have a very vastly, vastly different experience of a person? And, yeah. and that's a great example of your point of view creates your reality. Each one of us begins to start making conclusions from the time that we're, you know, learning to speak and, and even beforehand, right? We're making conclusions about the world. We're making conclusions about the people in our lives. We're making conclusions about the way the world is. I mean, you could generalize and say the world is a safe place and, you know, people have your back and you feel cared for. Or you can you could generalize and say that you go into the conclusion that the world is an unsafe place. And you need to take care of yourself because nobody else will. You know, like, these are the very initial things that we begin to set into our realities that then um, set the stage for how we engage and how the stories that we start telling ourselves and the stories that we tell ourselves very much are what create our reality. That point of view, you mentioned it briefly, Alan, point of view creates yeah. reality 100%. Your point of view creates your reality. There's even something called a confirmation bias scientifically that, you know, your confirmation bias is, you interpret, in, in, every single individual interprets information in a way that confirms what they've already decided is true. So you're simply going around gathering evidence for the truth and the proof of what you've already decided and concluded is true. And, and you know, when you begin to realize that and, and how limiting that is, like this is, this is where we create postage stamp size lives instead of living into possibility I mean, it wasn't until I, I came to Access and, you know, several years into Access, it didn't happen all at once, but I began to recognize possibility is something that's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, mm -hmm. my conclusions and my confirmation biases had me living in such a tiny world. It literally was, you know, I, I've talked about this for years now, what I call the coffin of conclusion. When you live in the coffin of conclusion, possibility doesn't exist. You literally exclude it from your reality. Yeah, and I, I, I just to pick up on that because that for me was like possibility was was not even real f for me as a child as I was growing up. You know, it was like you know because my parents were bought into a whole load of the um, uh, the stuff around you know your you don't have a choice over your life. And then my mother was really into kind of a lot of the the new agey kind of psychic medium stuff. So it was like, well, you have a destiny, you have a path that's about lessons. So there is no possibility. You just have to learn the lessons from the things that have already been chosen to be set out in front of you. So you couldn't change it. You just have to learn from it. So next time you get an easier path given to you. There was no, I'm creating my path. I'm creating the possibilities by by the choices that I'm making. And that you know, so yeah, it was 
and as a child, you know, like you, I, 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 for me, it was like I didn't really understand why my mother used to get so stressed over things because I would just be like, oh, we'll just go and do this. And I knew that, you know, so many different possibilities were available, but I was told I was stupid and too young to understand. And when I get older, I'll wake up and into the real world. And, and that's why I kept quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what what does it take for people to begin to recognize that the experience that they're having is completely changeable? Um, what if what if it's actually so changeable that anything that anyone else is doing, anything that anyone else is choosing, everywhere we fight might feel it be effective or oppressed by? What if we began to recognize that none of that is actually relevant to the reality that you are creating? And that's the place that I've landed now. I mean, I, I started in this place of of feeling completely at the effect of everything. And now I, I literally recognize that what other people are creating, what other people are doing, like all of this sort of, it's like it's like the static of an, an ex, our ter, external experience is really not relevant to what I am choosing to create. Keyword use, <laughs> keyword uh-huh. choice. Yeah. And, um, and that has given me a sense of freedom and, and creative potency that that I think I'm literally just beginning to tap. Um, yeah. it, it's been so fun to play with these tools of access consciousness and really begin to create my reality. And yet, it's like the more I recognize um, what's possible, the more I realize I'm just beginning to tap into that mm. that possibility. Like there's so much more to lean into. And um, this year has is we're we're already into halfway through of April. This year is really beginning to show me when when we truly open ourselves up to possibility and and recognize that every conclusion that exists is simply not relevant to the reality that I'm creating. Mm. Um, everything starts to open up and and you know we we hear the word magic and, and and people love to dismiss it. They're like, oh yeah, magic, magic, whatever, whatever. And it's like, no. What if life really can be magical? Re- what it really can be. Uh, as simple as choosing and as simple as recognizing that what other people are choosing, the conclusions that they're functioning from or even the conclusions and the stories in your own head are not relevant to the choi- to the to the reality that you're creating. If it can be that simple. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's like as I'm sitting here listening to you and engaging with the with the energy that's coming up for you, what's really exciting for me is like what if True magic, and I mean kind of real true magic, is question and choice. Yes. You know, it's like, <laughs> and I know, and it's like, because question and choice, is, you know, questions have always been wrong because you should never question anyone who thinks that they, you know, kind of know more than you. Choice is, you, there's no such real thing as choice because, you know, you get the choices that I decide for you and think. And so it's it's like it's been totally bastardized and misidentified of you don't really have choice you don't really and and questions are about getting answers they're not about getting awareness Mm. and uh, possibilities so it's like shit what if you know how potent are my choices and my questions and it doesn't even need to be a really complicated question or choice for it to be really potent it's like when do we really choose and that's where the magic is yeah and it's interesting mm. (laughs) (laughs) I was just gonna say it's interesting you know as we've been we've we've only we haven't done that many shows together yet and as as, I've already noticing that themes are coming up every time we get into our our discussions and um Mm -hmm. and choice choice of uh, is of course something that keeps showing up in every every radio show and there there are four different elements that access talks about when it comes to creation and those are question which you just said question choice possibility and and contribution so um, I mean, our, the the show was called Playground of Possibilities, right? So, so for yeah. me, it's it's really it's it's about what is it? What is it to create your life in this playground of possibilities? I mean, it really has become that for me over the years of playing with the tools of access. And I and I talk often in my classes about how my life used to feel a lot like a prison. I mean, if you believe that you're living at the effect of everything. It does feel like you're you're in a prison, and and the thing is, it's the prison of your own making. Yeah. So we can talk more about that after the break. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I was just I'm just I was taking a an executive choice there to say we'll do breaks at twenty and forty. Sorry, I should have asked you before I do that. So you can keep talking for five, or we can go for a break now. What would you prefer, madam? <laughs> we'll, we'll take a break. 
<laughs> Let's do that. Can you push the button, Rio, please? <laughs> what would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run, assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result, cannot change. The BARS is the first class in Access Consciousness, a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a BARS session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a boys class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? Were you told as a child to grow up, act your age, and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you are an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun? more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choice and possibilities are always available to you? Tune in to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. Canada, 613-800-8736. UK, 033-0001-0625. Or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. Hello and welcome back to Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, and oops, <laughs> who's knocking my headset off. Do you know I'm not going to be able to finish that today, am I? <laughs> Alan Jones and Tamara Yunker. <laughs> I can't get my words out. So we're talking about do I really create my reality? And before the the break, Tamara was talking about question, choice, possibility, and contribution. So Tamara, would you say that's how we create our reality? Question, choice, possibility, contribution. That's definitely the way that we will begin to create our reality. And, and you know, we, we're kind of talking about choice as such an integral part of this because you can, we, we each, we each um, begin to, to form stories in our heads. We, we, nothing has any meaning. Thing, everything is interpreted, right? So everything yeah. is, everyone's experience is an interpretation. And, and interpretations can be one of the greatest obstructions to receiving. And I don't think a lot of people really are aware of that. that you interpret, the way you interpret something can be one of your greatest obstructions to receiving. And if you want to create, it really kind of requires that we start opening ourselves up to receive more <laughs> in, mm. in that space of possibility. And that was certainly something that I had all but closed myself off to almost entirely was, was receiving. And it was, it was really funny at, at my, I think it was a third, gosh, third facilitators training or something. And, and, you know, Gary is talking about receiving on the very first day and I, and I had something that I wanted to contribute. So I had raised my hand and, and I said, you know, when I came to access, I couldn't receive shit. And, and Dane pipes in and he says, I think what you mean, Tamara, is all you could receive was shit. <laughs> and, and, and that was true because that was the reality that I was creating at the time. I, I shared a, a lot in, in my classes and, and radio shows and such that, that I really was this walking, talking Eeyore. I had created stories. Of, uh, based on the interpretation of my experience in my life that it, it was like, you know, everything was hard and nothing ever changes and, and I had locked possibility completely out of my reality. And so that was the reality that I was creating then. And it was, it was not enjoyable at all. <laughs> and, and so the first thing that I really started playing with when I came to access is the thing called choice, you know, and, 
and and especially here in America, the quote unquote land of the free. You know, we think we have so much choice available to us because you go to the grocery store and there's 80,000 different kinds of cereal, and you're like, well, of course we have choice. Look, I can choose from all these different cereals. I can choose where to live. I can choose what to drive. I can choose what to wear. I can choose it. And 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 retrospect. I mean, comparatively, yes, yes, we do have a lot of choice. And what if that's just simply exercising preference? But it's really not the kind of choice that's going to create your reality, so to speak, in the way that we're talking about today. And and when you begin to recognize that your choice is actually the creator of your reality, it becomes something different entirely. Absolutely. And I, I think for me, it, it's almost a bit like um, choice for me as a child, as I, as I was growing up. And even when I first started work or, and, you know, when I was at school, it was it was like your choices available were the ones that other people gave you choices were not something that you that you had control over that were beyond what anybody else told you you had to wait for somebody else to let you know what your choices were before you could choose from them. even when we were taking our options for our exams it was like these are the subjects that you can choose from and you have to choose in this way and you have to choose a language you have to do this you have to do that so you, there was no there was such structure around choices and you know and our, and the reality was you know for us for for me choice was you know as a very young child choice i realized i could just choose anything and the baby will choose anything it will just do it but you know as we as as i was growing up it was like choice then became something that actually was a limitation and so it's like it, the real kind of creating our reality yeah, i mean our reality is what it, whatever we our point of view is and if we have the point of view that choice actually doesn't really exist for us and we're all, we're constantly waiting to be told what our choices and options and possibilities are we're not kind of creating and and having the possibilities available to us that really are available to us if we were just to step out of that story of i don't have much choice into god i could actually choose anything yeah anything and and you have to be willing to trust possibility. This is the thing that I see over and over and over as I'm working with my clients, whether privately or in classes, that you actually have to be willing to trust possibility. If you're going to defend your con conclusions as what's real, and I see people do this all the time, mm. um, then you're saying you're closing the door to possibility. You're, you're not interested in possibility. And no. so it's really questioning every like what is real? What is real? What if nothing is a fact? What if nothing, I mean, we have to allow things to be mutable. We have to allow things to be changeable. And there, and there's so many times where, you know, I'd be in discussion with someone about possibility. And this, this was true for me when I first started Access. I fought for the right to maintain the the realness of every single conclusion that I had. And one mm -hmm. of the ways we do that is we'll say, well, that just hasn't been my experience. You know, somebody's inviting you into the possibility of something different, and you're saying, well, because I've never experienced it. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's possible, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have to be willing to let go of every conclusion that we have about the way things have been and say, just because I've never experienced it that way, just because I've maybe never even seen anybody else experience in that way, doesn't mean it's not possible. And I know that that has been true for me around relationships, right? Like this is, this is my area of specialty. Um, and, and, I looked at the the way relationship was done in my parents' marriage and, and their friends' marriage and, and then, of course, as growing up, my friends and their relationship and my own relationships, and I knew that something greater was possible. I didn't have the first clue how to create it, but I've always known, and I have been on this unrelenting pursuit of creating what I've known is possible, even though I've never seen it on the planet. And and that's the thing. Like if you if you look to the menu of this real reality, you say, oh well, that's all there is. Then then you're living in a con coffin of conclusion that's not allowing you to lean into, to reach into, and to create into possibility. So so the the relationships that I have now, and I'm talking specifically about you know kind of romantic relationships in this moment, are are relationships that I've never seen anyone else engage in. Like I literally have created something that didn't exist on the planet. And, I, and I'm not saying, I mean, obviously I don't know how everybody's relationships are functioning on the whole planet, but in my, in the people that I, in my circles of people that I know and the relationships that I've experienced of others, what I've created hasn't never existed before. So you have to be 
unrelenting in your pursuit of possibility. You have to trust possibility, and, and conclusions are not as real as we make them. No. No, and I think, you know, it is, for me, it's like, it, it is that nothing is real. And, I, you know, I've just finished a three-day uh, access body class, uh, which, yummy, yummy. <laughs> which was really nice, you know, spending three days of gifting and receiving body processes. And one of the great, one of the, the, the strongest themes of the whole weekend that just kept coming up so many people's stuff that they were clearing is, what if nothing is real? Yeah. And if nothing is real, does anything ever really matter? And if nothing really matters, why don't you just choose for fun? And yeah. it's like we don't have to keep choosing what other people choose because, you know, so it's, it's time to get out of the superior arsehole of I'll upset somebody else if I choose something that they don't, you know, that they're not willing to choose or they're unhappy about. I think, well, first of all, you have no, no, I have no control over how somebody else is going to feel and I have no right to have expectations about how they should or shouldn't feel about what yeah. I choose if, you know, yeah. it's, because it's like, and what what can I choose for me that will be fun? And once I let go of everything that I've believed, as you said, not to defend for or against anything or everything that I, you know, my story and all of that stuff that I've been holding in place, and going, okay, so if none of, the, if I woke up today and I couldn't remember anything about my past, or none of it existed anywhere, what would I choose? What would my reality be? Because I see some of these films sometimes with the, and it probably would be a bit disconcerting if you woke up and you couldn't remember anything in this reality. But there's a huge part of me that kind of goes, oh, that'd be fucking fantastic, <laughs> waking up and not having any story, any memory at all about who anyone is around me. I'm going, okay, so I could be and do anything. Yeah, yeah, and <sighs> and and mm. you you really can. We're, we're, regardless of what anybody else is choosing. And I think we, we, we've kind of bought into and perpetuated this lie that other people's choice create a limitation on my reality. And that's, that's just simply something that people should be in question about because yes. what if that's not as true as, as this reality has perpetuated it as being. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I, I, I worked with a client just recently who was struggling with a particular person. She was in a business um relationship and uh and you know was 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 having difficulty it was it was a sale of a business and you know she's selling the business and the and the, the business partner had become increasingly difficult and and you know she she just was like well he's he's just basically an asshole and i said i said okay well you know you may be having difficulty with working with this person but the, the moment you go into you know they're just an asshole or you you start forming conclusions about who they are you actually lose your ability to navigate this situation with ease. And, yeah. and you put yourself at the effect of that person rather than, and, and now you're, you're starting to create your story, right? This is where your story comes in and, you know, they're taking advantage of me and, you know, I'm having to do all of this work and they're not holding their up end of the, their end of the bargain and blah, blah, blah. And your story just gets perpetuated and perpetuated and perpetuated. And the thing is, so many of us don't, choose something different in how we're navigating or handling a situation because the story is what's holding it all in place. And if and, and story is just made up of conclusions and interpret, interpretations and conclusions of previous experiences. You know, the mind can only define what it already knows. Mm -hmm. So it really isn't until you begin to ask questions that the whole thing can unravel and begin to shift. Question, choice, possibility. You know, then then you're starting to create something different rather than just continuing to perpetuate the old story, whether whether it's a it's an old story that's getting overlaid onto a new experience like the one with my client or whether it's just a story that you're living out um, in, in your entire experience over and mm -hmm. over and over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, that's that's where I ask the question, you know, it's like, what's the value to me? What do I love about choosing <laughs> the same thing over and over again it's like what do I love about that and whose yeah. reality am I trying to create my life from yeah. so yeah there was something that um, Eleanor said that we can pick up after yeah. the break after um, the break <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely so uh, yeah this time so yes let's, I'll shut up and uh, <laughs> Rio can you uh, send us to the break please were you told as a child to grow up Act your age and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you are an adult? 
Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choice and possibilities are always available to you? Tune into the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, U.K. 033-0001-0625, or Skype us at a to zen.fm. You can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. So, welcome back to the Playground of Possibilities with Tamara Yonka and Alan Jones. And we're talking about possibilities, creating your life and your reality. And there was something that was mentioned in the chat room by Eleanor, was talking about just for me, just for fun, never tell anyone. And that was something that occurred to me earlier, but bright, shiny things took over. And it was, you know, the thing about having, being aware, Tamara, of this, uh, the fact that we can choose anything, we can, uh, and anything is possible. And, you know, it's just that question is our choice that create that. You know, we, we, we knew that when we were very young. And, and the thing was, we were telling everyone else around us that anything is possible. And then they tell us that we're stupid or mad or, you know, whatever it is that we get. So there was that. I, I know sometimes I, I've learned through my life that when I get excited about things that I know that I can choose and I haven't mm. asked the question about whether somebody can actually hear it. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm. You know, and I'm like going out talking to people about, you know, experiencing lots of different energies in the world, you know, fairies and unicorns and God knows what else and, you know, all sorts of other stuff about possibilities and energy and, and you know, the look some people give you when when I've, I realize my, you know, because my mouth is often much quicker than my brain <laughs> in terms of, you know, the, I, I need to kind of slow my mouth down so my brain can catch up in terms of, oh my God, this person can't hear that. And then we have to defend or make ourselves wrong for it. And yeah, so it can be a yeah. bit crazy. Yeah. And when, when you don't trust yourself and, and how many people do you know who really truly trust themselves? Not many. I mean, I, I don't really meet any except for people who are perhaps playing with the tools of access and they're, and they're really learning what it is to trust themselves again. Cause this reality systematically, um, you know, sort of erodes your trust in you and it does it in a very, in a very um, kind of, purposeful way almost you can't you can't control someone who trusts themselves and and so people are constantly looking for validation like they're constantly looking for confirmation of their reality and and so if you start sharing what your experience is and it doesn't confirm somebody else's reality it can feel threatening to them and mm. then they're gonna perhaps you know try and you know, say, oh, well, that's just crazy or that, you know, you're just living in a fantasy in your head or whatever. And and then if you're not really trusting your what you know, 
and the reality that you're creating, then that might start to have you question yourself a bit. Oh, well, wait, you know, maybe I'm a little nuts or something. The, the thing, the key to all of this, I would say, is, is you have to be willing to trust you. If you don't trust you implicitly, then you will continue to be looking for validation and confirmation by somebody else to confirm your point of view, to, con to validate, you know, your worldview. And the thing is, that, that's one of the things I can say. I, I don't look for anyone now to confirm my reality or my point of view because it's, I know it's not going to be the same as everybody else's. We don't need to all align and agree. It, it, perhaps there's some, you know, overlapping where we're, where myself and other people are um, creating in the same direction where our desire is in, in harmony with what we're creating. So it could perhaps look like, you know, there's some, there's some, um, you know, confirmation or validation there, but I don't require other people to see the world the way I do. I don't, con I don't require them to um, align and agree because uh, this is the reality that I'm creating. And I, I mean, I've, I've talked about, I, the world that I want to live in, what's the world that I want to live in? It's the one where kindness and possibility prevail. And so there's so much that I can create under that umbrella of a reality where kindness and possibility prevail. But that's sort of my, my overarching target, if you will. Hmm. And it's just because it's fun for me, right? Just, just, just for me, just for fun, never tell anyone. It doesn't matter what other people are creating. It doesn't matter if other people have other targets. They're in contradiction to that because what they're choosing and the, or what they're creating is not relevant to the experience that I'm creating and the reality that I'm creating. Yeah, it's um, it it it. Bleh. I can't get my words out now because the energy is just completely shifted. Um, it was kind of oh yeah that's what it was sorry back on track bright shiny so some time ago uh, right near, right near the beginning one of the shows that laura and i first started with was something like playing beyond the rules or creating beyond the rules or something yeah, yeah and it was like because we and we really got into the energy of you know we in this world in this world we live in we, we we kind of buy into a whole load of these you know law of gravity law of da 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 da, da and then we have our laws within each country etc cetera, etc cetera. and we were saying to people you know that the energy we were getting when we were playing with this was okay so if you didn't create uh, you know for try to create your life from the rules of everybody else is what else would be possible as an infinite being is an infinite being bound by the law of you know by what are considered to be the laws of reality as this world sees them and if you know that you can fold space move things around your house create things instantaneously and all of that kind of stuff it comes back to part of that you know um just for me just for fun never tell anyone so you can create your life beyond yeah. what are considered to be reality but you don't have to tell everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's yeah you know that's for me that's been such a huge huge you know I, I even now i'm i'm not i'm kind of milly kind of grasping you know what that actually really means for me it's like fuck if i can if i really can just create beyond what's considered to be this reality for me just because it's fun knowing that my ability to, my capacities to create beyond what people consider to be reality here um i can be such an amazing contribution to the world and I don't have to explain to other people how I did it. Yep, exactly. And that's and that's that 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 kind of key piece of being able to trust you without requiring other people to validate or confirm what you know to be true. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, because you, you do a class on it, but it's like for me, it's it's so much of the intimacy stuff mm -hmm. around you know vulnerability, um, honoring, trust. Uh, receiving what's the other one the honor trust allowance vulnerability that's and, it um the one i'm forgetting <laughs> <laughs> gratitude gratitude <laughs> aren't we awesome so anyway if you want to look that up you can you can contact tamara directly and she does an awesome two and a half day class so go to yeah, it int intimacy of being is um is kind of what i what i call it when you when cultivate that intimacy of being you are the, the the cornerstone and foundation of that whole thing intimacy of being is trusting you and and uh, you know access consciousness the 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 tagline is empowering you to know that you know that you know not that you confirm everybody else's reality or that they confirm yours but but that you know that you know the cornerstone of the cornerstone and foundation of it, creating your whole reality is that you trust you implicitly implicitly 
and that's one of these these uh, five uh, elements of, of intimacy and um, cultivating that intimacy of being with you is and you have to be willing to be vulnerable I mean they, they all start going together and, and that's what the class is all about <laughs> but, but, yeah and, and the thing is it's it's so fascinating when when I see I see I work with clients and um, again having having a, a different experience of, of a, the same person you know you can you can you can know somebody and someone else can know the same person and you get to perhaps having a conversation about the, their experience of that person and it's vastly 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 different well what mm -hmm. makes the difference is often to the degree that you're trusting yourself in your engagement with that person um if you're if there's something that you're trying to prove like you're trying to prove your value or you're trying to prove that you're nice and you're not mean or you're looking for approval you're going to have a very specific type of experience with somebody um, because you're not trusting you, you're still trying to prove something. You're still trying. You're still looking for approval, versus a, someone who doesn't have to prove anything, who's not trying to convince anybody of anything, who's not looking for approval. They would have a vastly different experience with the same person. I don't know if I'm making sense. It makes sense in my yeah. head. <laughs> yeah, no, that, <laughs> no, that makes perfect sense for me. And and the the thing as well is, is like, where's the congruence? If you're trying, you know, if you're, it, it, you know, there's so many things we places we could go with this with the 50-50 stuff and all of that. It's like, if you're trying to to show people that you trust yourself but you don't really, you're and you're kind of telling people that you do, the energy that comes from behind the words that you're saying isn't going to be congruent. And then other people are going to, you know, potentially resist and react, or you know, how, how they deal with you is not necessarily from the words that come from your mouth. It's going to be often the energy that comes from yeah. it. And so when you go out with expectations and other people don't have them because they're reading the energy rather than the words that you're trying to put out there. You know, I see it quite a lot on, on you know, on social media, on Facebook and stuff yeah, where people, you know, <laughs> and the people tell these stories about how wonderful and marvelous that they're portraying their life is and the energy behind it is, oh my God. And then you hear them somewhere on a, on a telecall. And this is not to judge them. This is not saying they're bad and wrong. What I'm saying is you see, so you hear them on a telecall somewhere and they're actually saying how dreadful their life is. And you're like, well, fuck, you were posting yesterday morning saying, you know, you live this life of luxury and everything's marvellous. And, and that's great. I'm, I'm not, you know, it's, it's just be aware of, of, you know, people read your energy. And when you trust yourself and you have that allowance for yourself and that vulnerability and that honouring of you, you know, that really comes across for me yeah. in, in, in everything that you do. And other people will pick up on that. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah and, and, I, I have a because I trust myself to such a high degree. Um, most of the people that I encounter, I encounter as pleasant. Right? Yeah. I, I don't I don't go around saying, oh my god, that person is an asshole. Oh my god, that person, you know, they're trying, they're such a manipulator, and they're trying to take advantage of me, and they're trying to control me, and they're this and they're that. I don't have that experience at all. I pretty much experience everyone as rather pleasant. Um, because mm -hmm. I know that no matter what, if that person tries to control me, if that person tried to manipulate me, if that person tried to take advantage of me, that wouldn't be the experience that I'm creating. And so I would simply navigate that with ease because I trust me. Again, yeah. it's it's so fascinating when, when I hear people um, talk about other people in these um, – ways that it's they're clearly living at the effect of them they're clearly living at the effect of them and and so i start looking i'm like okay well where are you seeking approval or where are you looking to prove your value or where are you trying to prove that you're nice or you know any kind of thing like that because you won't live at the effect of anyone when you trust you ever it's not possible yeah it's like but just what you're saying picking up on that it's like how often do people tell you when you uh, you might say something like, oh, I'm going to do X project with this person. They say, oh, you know, watch him or her. You know, he's a bit of yes. a bastard or she's. And yes. then the thing is, we, we totally buy into that. We don't question it. We don't trust our own awareness. We don't then live in the question in 10 second increments. of so actually, you know, is, you know, when let me just meet this person. Yeah. Let yeah. me just experience that person in the moment and then start to ask questions and see what's going on for me. Rather than handing over, as you said, making somebody else. Yeah. The you know greater than us. Mhm. Mm. Mm. Cute that way, aren't we? <laughs> we totally are. <laughs> so let's so, talk about contribution when we come back from the break. 
Absolutely, yeah, contribution, that'd be awesome. So yeah, let's do that. Let's push the button and move back after these. Were you told as a child to grow up, act your age, and stop being childish? And were you made to feel wrong for choosing to have fun? Is that still the same for you now that you are an adult? Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if you created it with more fun, more ease, and in the knowledge that far more choice and possibilities are always available to you? Tune into the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones, who have fun playing with tools, techniques, and ideas that will inspire you to create more fun, more possibilities, and more magic in your life. Do you want to play? Listen for the Playground of Possibilities radio show every Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on a zenfm What would you say if I told you that you could change your life in only one hour and all while lying down relaxing? Thousands of people all over the world have. What am I talking about? It's called Access Consciousness The Bars. The Bars is an energetic body process that contains 32 different points on your head that when run assist you in releasing decisions about any area of your life that you have made solid and as a result cannot change. The Bars is the first class in Access Consciousness a dynamic set of tools and information designed to transform any area of your life. When you have a bar session, the worst that can happen is you feel like you had a fantastic massage. The best thing that can happen is your whole life could change. Go to accessconsciousness.com today to find a facilitator to schedule a private session or to find a bars class in your area. Are you willing to give yourself an hour to change your life? This is the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. To participate in the program today, please call in the U.S. 815-880-8255, Canada 613-800-8736, U.K. 033-0001-0625, or Skype us at a zenfm you can also email us questions or comments by sending emails to playgroundofpossibilities at gmail.com. Now, back to the program. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> hello everyone. Welcome back to Playground of Possibilities with myself, Alan Jones, and Tamara Yonker. Tamara, contribution. Con- that's what it is, isn't it? I didn't forget yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As we've been talking about, you know, I kind of mentioned at one point the four elements of, of creation are question, choice, possibility, and contribution. We talked about that in the, you know, core classes of access consciousness. And, and I've really found that to be um, playing with each of those. What if each of those is actually a potency? What if question, question is a potency, choice is a potency, um, contribution is a co- potency? And what if what if we we don't we don't even allow these energies ourselves to be aware of these energies because they're not something that, that are uh, really exalted in, in what we, you know, okay. I got to back up for a second. In, in access, you hear a lot of like this reality, this reality, this reality. It's like, well, what the hell does that mean? And, and it's kind of the way I talk about it is sort of consensus reality, right? It's, it's what people have collectively sort of agreed upon. And, and then it's where we do our, 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 I'm, how am I relative to it? Like, am I right relative to it or am I wrong relative to it? And what we were talking about just before the break, that, that trust piece, you know, it, it, until you really trust you and you're not constantly doing this comparison of am I right relative to the consensus reality or am I wrong relative to the consensus reality? And, and once we give up all the proving and once we give up all the convincing and once we, once we really unrelentingly make the choice to create our own reality, we can't truly know the contribution that we be. Mm-hmm. We can't truly know the contribution that we be when we're trying to prove our value relative to this reality. Because this reality is, you know, it, it, it's, it's arbitrary. It's completely arbitrary. And it's, it's got all of its rules, as we were talking about before. And so, you know, it's like I have to understand everything. And then I have to figure out how I fit in. And then I have to figure out I can, how I can be a value. And then I have to, you know, it's this constant efforting of figuring out, figuring out, figuring out. And the true contribution that you be, you know, I'll go back to my, my intimacy classes, being is a contribution without doing. Mm-hmm. Being is a contribution without doing. 
Now that isn't to say that that once you are you've cultivated and you are truly living this this um, intimacy of being that you won't take lots of action because it's fun for you and it's because it's part of your innate creative um, capacities. I mean, we we are energy. We are innately creator beings. So there will be lots of action that will be taken and it will be generally joyful when it comes from being as opposed to force and effort when it comes from doing. So um, there's there's a sense of contribution that begins to emerge uh, quite naturally as we trust ourselves, as we begin to give up everywhere we're comparing ourselves relative to this reality and, and uh, trying to figure out how we fit into it and how we are, can be of value. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, again, it's like when you are being the, the, the infinite being that you be in totality, you are kind of your being question, choice, possibility and, and contribution because, yeah. you know, your energy is contributing and you're, you are being the question. You are kind of yeah. choosing from the energy that you be. And, and what a... And then more things become available to you. You know, I never really got that for for, for a long time to when Gary was saying well, there are possibilities and choices available to some that are not available to others. And I was thinking, yeah. and I used to get really pissed about that, thinking that's not right. Fuck off. You know, if if that's available to them, then it's bloody well available to to me. And I used to really <laughs> resist it, thinking, well, not if I'm not willing to receive it. Not if I'm not yeah. willing to be the energy, space, and consciousness that can create, generate, actualize, perceive, know, be, and receive it. You know, it's yeah. so. When you're walking down the street being the infinite being you be, there are more choices and possibilities totally available to you Absolutely. than there are someone who is buying into, as you said, you know, what is notionally collectively agreed as reality. But even that in itself, I was think I was kind of pondering that as you were talking about it. It's like yes, there's kind of it's even even in that what's what's considered to be reality in the world, there's still kind of different bits. If you go to um it, uh, I don't know, kind of India, Pakistan, you know, their their kind of religion is very different in the in the East than it is in the West and so their what collectively they consider to be reality is even different to where we are here. Yeah. Um I, I love mm. that you brought that up. Like that's such a beautiful way to uh, wrap up our, our show today, Alan, that whole thing. Um there are choices and possibilities that aren't available to people who are living in the coffin of conclusion. So if you really do want to create your life as a, a playground of possibilities, I would invite everyone to listen to listening to the show to really look at what have you made real, what have you made immutable, what have you made unchangeable that is just simply a point of view, that is just simply a story that you continue to perpetuate over and over and over because everything that you interpret, every single one of your interpretations is simply an obstruction to greater receiving. Where are yeah. you interpreting something as fact as, as uh, that isn't? Where are you interpreting something that's turned into a conclusion that doesn't that closes the door on possibility? That's got such an expansive, awesome energy to it that that yeah, wow! <laughs> <laughs> I just felt my whole energy just kind of just going woof as you were as you were talking about that that whole willingness to question every single point of view you have. And first of all, it's like who does that even belong to and secondly is that even working for me anymore yeah yeah is it creating more in your life or is it perpetuating the same mm. definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over or buying the same story over and over and over or living in the same conclusion over and over and over and and expecting a different result if you really want to create your reality it's opening to possibility and not allowing anything that has been be the fact that you're living into the future because there is no such thing <laughs> <laughs> and it's like when you notice that you're creating your life and the same thing happens over and over again you know a question that i that i tend to ask myself now is okay so what point of view do i have that keeps creating this yes yeah because uh, yeah you know because we lock into these points yeah. of view but then you know we're kind of told that aren't we you know you have to get off the fence and pick one side or another so, which is oh. so not true. So, what else is possible, my friends? Let's do yes. now and in the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, lovely people. We will see you same time next week. Thank yes. you for listening. <laughs> Until next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Playground of Possibilities radio show with Tamara Yunker and Alan Jones. We hope you enjoyed playing with us today 
and that you'll come back with us next Monday at 3 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 a.m. Pacific on A to Zen.fm. Until then, what would it take for you to enjoy playing with choices and possibilities to create more fun, more magic, and more of everything you desire? What will you choose today?